Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well and enjoying being at home. Candice, Norma and I are really going to miss you on Sundays, but we look forward to when we can all come back together again. The great news is we can still carry on learning about Jesus and how much he loves us, even though we can't come to church on Sundays. So wherever you are and whoever you're with, at home or with friends, let's all close our eyes and pr pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can learn about you, read your word and talk to you wherever we are and at any time. Thank you that you are always with us. I pray that you will help us to understand today's Bible passage and that we will know from it just how much you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I would like you to think about a question for a moment. You can even pause the video after this and share your ideas with those sitting and watching with you. How do you show your friends or your family how much you love them? Or what has someone in your family or a friend done for you recently to show you how much they love you? I recently got married and Alex, my husband, shows me every day how much he loves me. He makes coffee in the mornings to wake me up. He helps me around the house to cook and clean. He calls me at work sometimes and says that he loves me. And he comforts me whenever I feel sad. I can also think of a true act of love that I've seen in a movie that most of you will know and that you probably love a lot. And this movie is Frozen. You can ask mom and dad to watch Frozen this week at home. Now towards the end in Frozen, Elsa's magical winter has become a massive blizzard and everyone is in danger of facing an eternal winter. Hans, who was a good guy, has now betrayed Anna and his plan is to take over the kingdom and kill Elsa. When Anna sees that Hans is about to kill her sister, Anna, she gives up her life to save Elsa. So here you can see how Anna stands in between Elsa and Hans, and she gives up her own life. This is the greatest way that Anna could show her love for her sister. Giving up your own life costs so much more than a cup of coffee, or helping with chores, or giving a hug, or even buying a really expensive present. Anna chose to die so that Elsa could live. And this is how we know how much Anna loves her sister. Now, it's hard enough to imagine how Anna could choose to die for her sister, who she loves. Imagine she chose to die for Hans, the bad guy, the enemy. The Bible tells us that this is how we can know God loves us. He loves us so much more than Anna could have loved her sister, Elsa. Thanks, Candice. Let's all read together from Romans 5, verse 7 to 8. Romans is the sixth book of the New Testament, and it was written by Paul to the church in Rome. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So, Paul is saying we don't often see someone who will die for a worthy person, someone who deserves it. And someone might possibly die for a good person. But God has gone way further than any person would dare to go to show his love for people. While we were still sinners, God's enemies, Jesus died for us. So just like Hans is Anna and Elsa's enemy, people all start out as God's enemies. Why do I say that? A little bit earlier in Romans, in chapter three, verse 23, we read that everyone is a sinner because we all disobey God and turn our backs on him. 
That includes me and you. We all want to follow our own way instead of God's way. And it's not just about our actions or our words. It's mostly about our hearts. We all have hard and frozen hearts. But because we turn away from God, we are his enemies and he has to punish us. The Bible also tells us that the punishment for sin is death. It's not only death as in one day our bodies will die, it's also a death as in we will live without God forever. This is because God is holy. He's perfect, he doesn't do anything wrong, and he can't live with people who are sinners, who are unholy. No matter how hard we try, we can't be God's friends on our own. Our sin keeps us far away from God and makes us his enemies. But that is not the end of the story. Jesus died for people because God loves them. God must punish sin, otherwise he won't be a loving and just God. Imagine you hurt, or someone hurt you at school, and you went to your teacher, but your teacher refused to do anything about it. That is just a tiny picture of how it would be if God didn't punish sin. But because he loves us so much, he sent Jesus, his one and only son, to take the punishment for our sin. Jesus lived a perfect life, guys. He never, ever disobeyed God. He never turned away from him. But he died on the cross to take the punishment for our sin. So just like Anna gave up her life for Elsa because she loves her, Jesus gave up his life for us because God loves us. Jesus got punished even though he didn't deserve it to rescue us from death that we all actually deserve. We call this grace. It is a free gift from God. It means getting God's love without doing anything to deserve it. We can also see that Jesus didn't just die for one person, like Anna chose to die for her sister. No, Jesus chose to give, give up his life for everyone. You, me, everyone sitting with you at home, every single person in the entire world who's ever lived and every single person who will still live in the future. God has done so much more for us than Anna, any superhero or any other person can ever do. Now you might be wondering, how do I become God's friend? How do I not be his enemy anymore? John 3 verse 16 tells us the answer. Everyone who trusts in Jesus will be saved and live with God forever. If you admit to God that you have sinned, if you believe that Jesus died for you too, and if you confess that Jesus is your rescuer and ask him to save you, you will be God's friend forever. Three amazing things happen when we become God's friends. The first thing is that we can know for sure, without ever doubting, that God loves us. He's proven it to us. So kids, if you are uncertain about what is going on in the world, if you are not sure when you can go back to school, if you are even unsure of what's going to happen tomorrow or later today, you don't need to worry because you can know the creator of the universe loves you. The second thing is we can live a new life with God that starts today and lasts forever and ever. Jesus didn't stay dead. Just like Anna in the movie, he rose again on the third day and he is alive in heaven. And everyone who trusts in Jesus is not only saved from death, we also get a brand new life. And God's spirit helps us to live a life that pleases God. And the final thing, we can show God's love to people around us. We shouldn't wait for people to do something to show us that they deserve our love. We should love them because God loves them. And this means that you can love your enemies too. Let's pray together. 
God, thank you so much for your Bible and for telling us in it just how much you love us. Thank you for proving to us that you love us by sending Jesus to die on the cross for our sin. God, I pray that we will live each day certain of that fact and that we will show your amazing love to everyone around us. In Jesus' name, amen.